Hey guys, welcome to that pedal show. Dan here. Mick here, hello. Welcome to Pick and Mix. Um, just goes to show that, uh, oh, are we all right on the old mics there? I think that one might need to move a little bit. Anyway, um, welcome to Pick and Mix. Four pedals in half an hour or thereabouts without rushing. Just to, no This is going to be, this is going to be on the edge. No one gets lots to go through here. And I think we kicked off there with the absolute proof that as soon as you introduce anything Zvex to the equation, Gets weird. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, apologies for the sweary, but you know. It's so good. It's so good. All right, the pedals we're looking at today is the Odyssey from Hampstead, uh, the Golden Fleece from Mythos Pedals, the Proteus Sub Decay Analog Sample Hold Filter, and the Lo Fi Loop Jackie from ZFX, which is what we were. Grooving out to what we were grooving out to on the beginning there. Yeah, okay. So, um, Hampstead then. Anyone who doesn't know Hampstead, uh, they make very nice amps. Dan's a big fan of the A20, A60 plus RT yeah. amps. Yeah. Um, they also make a really, really, really lovely tremolo pedal, which we like a lot. And as you were telling me, first overdrive pedal? This is their first overdrive pedal. Okay. Um, right. And what I really love about these guys, James and Peter, neither of them play guitar. Right, right. A bit like me and you. <laughs> so, um, Peter comes from, I think it's an aeronautical background. He's an amazing engineer, and his friend one day asked him, you know, can you have a look at my amplifier? And he looked at the amplifier and went, oh, I, can design, I can design a better amp for this, which he did, and it became the Hampstead Amps. And the tremolo that he, he designed in the amplifier became a pedal. Anyway, he was looking at overdrive pedals then, he thought, I, I can do something quite, you know, that he yeah, was going to be better. Yeah, what a bunch yeah, of idiots, exactly. what were they thinking? So, this, now this pedal is very interesting. Basically, it has two sides. It has an EQ side, which is the level treble and bass, and then the overdrive side, which is the gain, uh, the gain, the gone, which is the gain tone, right? So, if you just have a swing for me for a sec, so the two amps we're using today is the Marshall 1987X, that one, and the Super Fender Super Reverb. It's like it, 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 I find it consistently astonishing how much information there is in his brain, but basic things just not in there are they at all? No. Yeah, no, that's right, Stuart. So let's um, <laughs> let's let's crack on. <laughs> if you can, <laughs> I, did, I called him Darren in the last video. If you can, uh, okay. So, uh, let's, should we hear the amps first? So, let's hear the amps first. It sounds so good. That sounds Et so good. Okay. Yeah, we're really eating into our time here. <laughs> That's all right. You know, four really quick I'm only saying it people get annoyed when... when they think we're not, when we're going too fast. Okay, now, 
This is the last video of the day, people, and we've had no alcohol. Okay, so can I have a look at the EQ to start with? Okay, right. right. So now, with this toggle, the, cent the top toggle in the center position, it's just the EQ. All right? So. Okay, so with the EQ set like this, straight up, straight down, there's very little audible difference. Right. I can hear the buffer. You can hear the buffer, but that's, that's, you know, if I turn the treble down. Yeah. Mick was so worried about his buffers, he forgot to play any of the right notes. <laughs> Okay, so that's the EQ. So now what I can do is we can cut some bass, add some treble. Okay, so that's the EQ. So it's Baxendahl type EQ, so, you know, it's active. There's... Dan just said it's a Baxendahl type EQ, which means it's active. Right. <laughs> He's... So it it adds and and subtracts. It's not yeah. you know it's not just subtractive. So yeah. so you can add bass as well. Okay, the next the next thing we need to look at is this little switch here. This little switch here is the input gain. Right. Right. So we have times one, which is what one now, which is basically unity. If I have that and go to times two. So it's a massive boost. Then it goes to times five. Okay. It's, it's, it's huge. Massive, yeah. Right. What kind of input is it? Is it a JFET? Uh, it wouldn't tell me. Okay. Right. Okay. So that's the EQ side. Then. We get, um, we have the choice of the EQ going before the overdrive ah. or after. The now, overdrive. okay, that proves that's a great feature because my first question was going to be: Is the EQ pre or post drive? Have it wherever you like. And is are they all pre or post drive? So the bass isn't before. No, and exactly. The, 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 it's a, the, the EQ is a separate circuit. So the whole EQ is either before okay. or the whole EQ is after. Interesting. Okay, so if we have um, the EQ, we just, just leave it. Set for of a sexist comment I can already hear that is a man's overdrive pedal cool or, or, or a, a woman's it's not a girl's or a boy's overdrive pedal. there you go it's, yeah. an, it's, an, it's an adult it's a it's a grown adult yeah I mean it could be for pedal. anyone you know regardless of gender or sexual orientation or anything else it's for anyone what I'm saying is it's not uh, compressed Nick disclaimer. Yeah, Nick disclaimer. <laughs> it's not like a safe, compressed, easy. No, no. no. So, okay. This now this is what I really like about this. If if you at the moment the uh, EQ is after yep. the gain stage. So, um, if I turn that down um, and I have loads of gain going into the EQ, um, the EQ has loads of headroom, so you get the the. <laughs> Does get more compressy and much yep. more. So friendly. you can. So what you can do is mix the way that you use this the, between the treble and tone. Yeah, is amazing. But now, if I put the EQ before the gain, 
Alright, so. Now that's with the times one type input. If I double the input, That's straddling all kinds of lines between overdrive, distortion, and fuzz. Yes. Very cool. And Sorry, then I was, got... I'm trying to work out the five note thing. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. That's it. Struggling. Yeah. But then you've got the three different clipping diode options as well. Ah. So, so, you know, here goes like every second. I don't think I've ever heard anything as versatile, easy to play, huge headroom, massive compression. Isn't it amazing? It really is. I guess uh, we are pushing time, but we should hear it with some humbuckers before we or your telly. Something else that's just going to make it sound a bit different. Can okay. I ever play? Yep. Right, I'm going to go on there. Times one, everything straight up. Yep. Let's try there. <laughs> Isn't that nice?
That is a strong overdrive. That's my word. I'm not going to say man's. I'm not going to make it gender specific or any other specific. I'm going to say that's strong. It's very strong. What about the wikis? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that is a strong, strong, strong overdrive. Yeah. That's Tweaky amazing. Tweaky as heck. Yep. Mama. Yep. You know, once you, you know, you understand the EQ and that you can move it and change the, you know, the dyes and stuff and there's so many, but there's so many great sounds in it. It's not like you're looking for a great sound. It sounds fantastic. I like the way, I mean, you can be, you can be bold with your EQ choices. Yeah. Um, and go from like really, because I can imagine that if you're into a cooking amp, you've got so much EQ flexibility there. Yeah. And your kind of you know brightness and level that you could do you could you know hammer the front end of your mm. Marshall mm. Um, or Vox or whatever and find an EQ that worked with it. Oh, looking at you, Strime in Riverside, that is yeah, right. That's the analog Riverside contender challenger. Yeah, yeah. I, I was going to say killer, but you know. We, we shouldn't be so pointed. If you were, one other very cool feature it has. Notice the foot switch on it? I do. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's Dan's foot switch. Yeah, this is the first uh, first pedal manufacturer to be using the um, those up the kick foot switches. But yeah. Wow. R really, really strongly and highly impressed. Yeah. And I think, it, as a sort of, I think that's going to appeal to people who don't like tube screamers. For whom an OCD is too compressed, mm. or you know, too rock. Mm -hmm. uh, for whom the, your, all your standard. What I like about it is that it is palpably different. I've never heard anything like it. Yeah, N like, and that never. doesn't happen every day. No, no, it's it's wonderful. Okay, and uh, that's it. That's the show. Thank yeah, you we'll so much for week. watching. Um, okay, like moving right along. So, you know, from a pedal that, you know takes a cerebral approach to something that you can just turn up and rock out. This is the Mythos Golden Fleece. Now, Zach um, has sent us a few things, and we're going to have them on the show, uh, including the fabled Joe Landreth edition. Um, Mjolnir. The, yeah. How do you say it? I think it's Mjolnir. Mjolnir. Okay. MJ. Mjol, Mjol, they're, they're Norse gods, I think. Oh, right. Okay. Not Greek gods, as I've said once before. Um, but this is, the, this is the, the Golden Fleece. Single transistor. Uh, thing that spans overdrive and fuzz, super simple. Okay, let ha have Shrang on this one. Okay. <laughs> I'm wondering if it's got some sort of internal trimmer because I don't remember it being as gaining as that. It's amazing. That is sweet as a nut. I said to Dan that he would like that before we started this video. That's really lovely. I'm going to try something. I'm going to turn the 
vibrato and the reverb up really high in the super reverb. So what we've kind of got is a wet dry business going on here because the Marshall's going to be dry. The Fender. I already know this is going to sound epic. <laughs> well, you know. That's as slow as it will go. Really? Awesome. What I had in my head when I started that and realised that I can't really play the guitar in the right manner was um, think about like Blake Mills, all those sounds that are not traditional overdrive sounds that are a bit right. kind of broken and scratchy yeah, on the yeah, top yeah. and then you add ambience and reverb and they just start sounding really um, vibey and old school and yep. all of that. F for me that pedal works brilliantly well to, mm. you know it kind of sits in there with the Hudson Broadcast a little bit yes maybe yeah, yep um, yeah because there's a there's a, uh, a clarity about it um, that is similar that, and the way it breaks up in the top end yeah it's, a, it's kind of a little bit fuzzy but you know yeah not quite yeah very awesome. cool very very, cool. very very cool okay now this thing <laughs> We're doing a show um, on uh, filters, envelope filters, um, very soon. But this came in and I had to include it in this show because it's so cool. So, okay, yes, it's, a, it's an envelope filter, an envelope follower, and it sounds great. But then it does this thing that is just awesome. Hang on, before you change the sound. Okay. I, uh, just listening to it made a little riff come into my head there, and I don't know even if I can play it because I've never played it before. It's the John Mayer song. Oh yeah, right. <laughs> Mm 
Can I have a bit more envelope? Yep. <laughs> Okay, 101 uses for an envelope filter. But it's a great sounding filter. It One. sounds it sounds really great. Okay, so uh, low pass band pass switch, <laughs> but then you've got this thing. Okay? Have you come to fix my washing machine? <laughs> sure, let me get my tools out. <laughs> Sorry, childish, childish, childish. Can't help it. Can't help it. Can't help it. Ah. Oh. oh. <laughs> that was very good. My mind. That... Right. Right. <clears throat> so, apart from the um, help with the impending load. <laughs> <laughs> this is a family show. <laughs> If you, if you, now there's a, there's a little tap and hold thing on here. Oh, okay. If I, if I right. tap a tempo in here, you've got to hit it four times. So, and then, then it starts doing this random filtering thing. Right, and then, now I used to have one of these. This is so much fun. Uh, this is the Lo-Fi Loop Junkie um, from ZVEX. One thing that confused me when I first got it, I couldn't find anywhere to plug the power in. There's nowhere to plug the power in. It takes two milliamps of he, power. He says, if you record a loop into it, bury it in the garden for a hundred years, assuming it doesn't get corroded and rust away to pieces. All right. You might have to put it in a plastic bag. Um, the loop would still be in there. Wow. Two milliamps. Two milliamps, current draw. It's, it, it's crazy. So it's a lo-fi looper. So lo-fi looper. So it's, it's basically, it's, it's an, like an analog sampler. I think he says in the, in the, I did have a quick skirt through the manual. If you wanted to, so it works, the, the, from what I understand, the, the, the technology is somewhat similar to Bucket Brigade. Yes. Except that if you wanted 20 seconds of loop, which is what it has, you would need some crazy number of, um, Bucket Brigade chips. Yep. Zach says it would take 25 800 millisecond analog delay pedals. We probably could have done that with maths, but uh, yeah, no analog to digital conversion. Mm -hmm. He says, I've made something. You'll have to decide if it's worth it. It took me years of goofing around with this strange analog recorder, but I think it's finished. The recorded version of your performance may never sound the same as the original, but sounding the same isn't always the most important part of what effects do. It's really look, it's really cool. I I um I had to stop using mine because one of the things about this was I I needed a looper that would stay in time. Yeah, you needed a digital. Looper. I needed some yeah, exactly. Yeah. And you you kick this on, it's like it'll it'll come in soon. You know, it's it's a, but it's it sounds amazing. Okay, so we have this set up. Shut 
shall, shall we record a new loop, Dan? Yeah, let's put a new loop. So all the noise and hiss you're hearing is absolutely no. as, it, as it should be. Yep. And he says, you know, some people say the noise and hiss is too much to handle. Other people say it's an in- essential part of the sound. Did you have a record level? Yeah. Um, so you need to me- mess around with it and see how much level you need to record to it. And if you get it before, you know, before it starts distorting... Yeah, you know, and then mess around with the volume. You get it as clean as you possibly can, but it's always going to be a bit messy. Let's record a loop then. All right, you ready? Yep. So, two, D, four. <laughs> okay. Now, if I play that. So he's put this little modulation thing on here so he makes vibrato. it sound like a, like a vibrato. It's so cool. So it sounds like a kind of a, 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 a bit of tape going around or a, yeah. or a record player yeah. or something like that. But now if you play over the top of that, right? Yeah. With... There you go. It's kind of uh, it's it's weirdly Moorish. Yeah, one of the things I used to use it for, which is really great, is if instead of having a, like a, a rhythmical loop, um, if you uh, uh, just have a have a noise. So. Stuff like that. Or something like that. Something, (laughs) you know, um, as opposed to having a a rhythmical thing, if it's just a a, a noise and it's just creates a loop of (coughs) of sound. Now that you've done that, it makes me think, oh, imagine if you had like a delay in a reverb before that soundscapes. Exactly. Yeah, thunder and rain and... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It certainly adds its own element to that sort of thing. It's very cool. I mean, I guess the questions are... Why not just get a digital looper and... Because that. Because that's the answer. Because that. Because that. Yeah, yeah. Brilliant. Okay, guys. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, Lots of fun today. Yeah, lots of cool stuff. Yeah, yeah. 
uh, yes, thank you so much. A uh, massive thank you to our preferred retailers, the details of which are in the comments, uh, in the detail section below. Yeah. Now, somebody... Mick, Nick works really hard on the on the, on that section, the detail section. Go and have a look because it's amazing. I've never seen another YouTube video that has as much detail and information in there. So go and check it out. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Thanks, Dan. And, oh, no. Thanks. No, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Simon. But thank you. And Stephen, whoever you are. Um, well... <laughs> Uh, <laughs> yeah, anyway, thank you. Go to the Pedal Show store, check out our new t-shirts um, and other things like that. Brilliant. Cheers, guys. Thanks so much. See you next week. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.